This is a video of the old country store reproduction that we have at the Chelmsford Historical Society on Byam Road in Chelmsford. And I'm just going to go around to give you an idea what this old country store looks like and what's on the shelves. And this is a reproduction of a store that was at Sturbridge Village. And it was built approximately 28 years ago here in Chelmsford. But this is what a store of around the year 1900 would have looked like. You could see some of these old products on the shelves. And I see my good friend, Fred Miriam over here. Hi, Fred. Fred's a Hi, very Tom. active member of the Chumpson Historical Society so, on the board. I'm glad to see you in the store today. Uh, we don't have the pot belly running because it's nice and warm outside. Is this a but, pot belly? Uh, oh. But you're welcome to the pot belly's right behind you. Oh, right you. behind me, yeah. So, and in the wintertime, of course, we'll have that cranked up. So if right. you want me to grind a pound of coffee, uh, we're ready with our grinder. Oh, we'll, there's uh, the old-fashioned coffee grinder uh, we there. Can, we can weigh whatever you need right here. And, and weighing uh, things here. Look yeah. at that scale, the old-fashioned scale. I wanted to tell scale. you, you know, we're at summertime. Um, we want to make sure our pies and cakes don't have any flies on them. So we have a special screened container. Oh. So uh, uh, if you want one of our blueberry pies, okay, we keep it right here in this container. Nice, so, so beautiful. Uh, if you're interested in a piece, you go ahead and uh, scoop one out there, and uh, we'll we'll ring you up, okay? We definitely and, uh, don't want any flies we, on our pies. <laughs> we, we have about 40 dozen eggs today, so if you oh. want some eggs, we have a carrier here so that you can carry them safely, and then uh, nice. return the carrier when you're through. This but, whole uh, carrier, people yeah. would return that. Sure. After, that's amazing. These days, people buy... The little cardboard boxes. It's in uh, recycled cardboard, I think, in the future. Yeah. But uh, yeah. we're using wood and wire. And nice. So that was a form of recycling as well, right? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. And of course, uh, whatever you get, we'll wrap for you with a paper. It's got a nice. nice cutter right over here. We just pull the paper and uh, and cut it off over here. Yeah, off. I see. Yes. Yeah, nice, nice. So, oh, and there's some sample eggs over here. Yeah. I see. So, what is that? So this, uh, I'm not sure why it's up here on, on top of the counter today, but usually we use this to deflect the heat from a fire. So if you're sitting in a chair, you can set this um, next to the fire so the, the fire won't overheat your legs. It'll deflect the fire back toward the fireplace. Wow, so, nice. I think it was just set up here because huh. somebody thought uh, this was a display area for some reason. You know, we're trying to do business here. And, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll stamp your uh, your receipt. Of course, we have the latest um, uh, technology for for stamping uh, time, date. Yes, uh, nice. The Someday, I think they're going to invent a, invent something made of plastic. But oh, right. <laughs> plastic's not invented yet, so we don't worry about it just now. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we can weigh your eggs and categorize them. You know, for uh, grade grade A, B, C. Oh, is that what that was um, for? Yeah. Well, you put your egg right on here, and uh, it'll tell you right here. Oh. The, the grades are extra large, large, medium, and small. So, nice, uh, nice. The heavier it is, the uh, the more it weighs. So wow. we have some right here, and these these eggs. I'm not sure what grade, so let's check out and see what they are. Let's set this down. Let's put it down. Okay, that is a small. That's a small egg right there. I see. Yes. So yeah. um, I have a feeling that um, all you're going to be able to get today, Tom, is uh, is small. S small eggs. I and see. And I'll cash you out on this register right here. Yes, that's a nice old fashioned yeah, yeah, register, yeah. right? Uh, it says four dollars, but I think you could buy uh, you could buy quite a few dozen eggs for four dollars. So that's for sure. Yeah. You can use that carrier there. You can carry a few dozen in the carrier and nice. take them home and. Uh, it uh, make yourself a big omelet. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> nice. And this must be this an is old for, uh, for calculator? calculator. Right. It's for a Burroughs calculator. Oh. And uh, this is used for, for adding, and uh, it'll punch up a nice receipt. So each item wow. uh, that you give me when you check out, okay, I'll, uh, I'll punch it. And then we'll have a yeah. actual uh, printed receipt right here that you can take with you. And if you don't, uh, if you think uh, I charged you too much, or even worse, if I charge you too little, yeah, <laughs> uh, you can check and make sure that the numbers came out right on here. But it's only um, uh, it's only as good as my ability to uh, to get the numbers right when I get. That's when I in the old them. days. These days, they just scan them without even putting something in the register, right? They just scan the well, items. You know, I, I haven't heard the word scanning before, but... Uh, oh, that's it what they call it? I, I don't know oh. what scanning is. Uh, oh, when you this, got this the food. Oh, yeah, oh know, I see. You're in, when, you, when you take the paper, oh, yeah. you, you read it. Yeah. I, uh, you can scan it with your eyes. Yes. But, 
Yeah. It doesn't make too much sense, but uh, <laughs> whatever terminology you'd like to use. Is I, fine. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Seth. Yeah, here we are in 1900. So we have we, some good medicines for you. If you yes. Have any of the sarsaparilla. Right remember that? Yeah, yeah this is well, good. That's good stuff. Uh, now, for colds and coughs, now these are uh, Mr. Ayer. Uh, of course, the town of Ayer is named after him, but oh. he had his factory right in here in Lowell, and Father John, too, in Lowell. I think that Father John's building uh, may have been, uh, may still be there oh. uh, in, in Lowell. And uh, notice that it, it isn't just for relief of coughs and colds, okay, it cures coughs and colds. Wow. So I want you to note that. Yes. If you do have a cold, okay, Father John will cure whatever it is that ails you. Uh, nice. this, this is one of our modern uh, horseless carriages. Yes, yeah. Uh, no <laughs> feed necessary, and uh, uh, you know you can uh, park it and forget it. Um, you don't have to go and uh, change, uh, clean it out every night, and that sort of thing. Yes, nice. And this is just for rich people. The uh, the king ate. Yeah. I think actually, I'm going to check. I think this is one of our local boys. It's the uh, uh, no, actually, it's in Detroit, Michigan. I was wrong. It's a touring car. No, that's uh, oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's not no, for Chelsea people. That's yeah. that's for uh, rich people down yeah. in uh, in Boston. Boston. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So uh, these are some more ads. Uh, Haynes Apperson. Now, there's the latest. This is going to be the biggest thing in automobiles. Okay. Yep. Someday in the future, maybe a hundred years from now. Okay. Everybody's going to be driving a Haynes Apperson. Yeah. Okay. You're going to like this. It's unique. It has its own type. It's proved the best for American roads, better than foreign types. Now, note that. Better than foreign types. You never know. Somebody in a foreign country might try to send the car over <laughs> here. Uh, better than the so-called American type of motor car. It's the oldest make in America, uh, uh, one of the oldest in the world, and the most thoroughly developed. So you watch this company. Put all your money on Haynes Apperson. They're going to be the future of uh, automobiles. Will be. So... Uh, this clock, I uh, just wanted to tell you a little bit about Parkhurst store, which is yeah. where uh, Route 110 and, and uh, Route 129 and Chelmsford Center meet. Yes. And I think way off in the future, somebody by the name of McHugh yeah. is going to have an office in the, in the building. But for now, yes. uh, this clock tells the, the time. It's uh, kind of a commercial quality, um, not a very fancy clock. It has a weight. Oh, yeah. Good for a week. So there's the weight right there. Oh, I see. Nice. So you wind it up. Weight goes up. Weight goes down. Hands go around. Nice. So that's an example of uh, just your basic uh, commercial or industrial clock. And I uh, wanted to bring to your attention this thick rope over here. Yeah. And this thick rope over here goes over a wheel, which is up on the ceiling there. You see a large wheel? Yes. And you see a hook here, too. It looks like a crane hook. Okay. Well... If you notice, the uh, the crane rope is wrapped around a skinny shaft. Yes. And yeah. the large wheel, uh, that that boy we just hired was messing around with it, and it came off the wheel. Okay. Oh. But, uh, we'll have him go up to the second floor and put the rope back over the wheel. But when you pull the uh, the rope, yeah, in this direction, let's say, the uh, that will this hook will go up. Oh. And. Uh, it, it, it can carry a much heavier load than, uh, than the amount of uh, weight that you're pulling down on the rope. So the stock boy that we just hired recently, we can bring goods in through the, the uh, loading door over on the side, bring it over here. He can take it down to the basement for storage, or if it's dry goods, he can take it upstairs and uh, put it up on the second floor and just move it over. So it's, uh, wow. it's like, an, uh, we call it, uh, an, we came up with a new word called an elevator. Oh, I so, see. Yeah. Nice. So it's a uh, goods elevator to uh, wow to bring things uh, in the store. And you notice there's a hook in the floor here, so the floor opens up, and uh, yeah. this uh, this hook just goes right down, so we can we can take the heavy things like wow. kegs of nails or things things of that sort. Yeah. Um, and store those down in the basement. Wow. So uh, so that's what this is for. Not too many people know about that. Yes, yeah. And there's a little explanation here. It's called the differential windlass, horizontal wheel and axle. Yes, wow. Grounds of different diameters and uh, use it to raise or lower barrels or drums.
Nice. And it was used in a Parker store. Now, it was donated by Bradford Emerson, so I don't know how uh, uh, S.W. Parkhurst, who owns this store, yeah. oh, with the windlass, oh. I'm not sure how uh, it came into uh, Bradford Emerson's hands, but uh, someday I guess that will be explained and people will understand what, where the name Bradford Emerson <laughs> came from. But for now, uh, this was S.W. Parker's store wow. uh, with the clock and the differential windlass. Um, so we, uh, we had a, a marvelous transportation innovation oh. back in 1804. And, yeah. uh, it was called the uh, Middlesex Canal. Nice. Right? That's and a sign for this, it, looks like. This was started... 18... It, it was started uh, back in 1874. Uh, at least the uh, uh, incorporation was started, and uh, it was actually opened in 1804, yeah. 1794. So that's about 10 years in the construction. I see, yeah. And it allowed goods to go from Middlesex Village. Now, that's part of... That's East Chelmsford, okay? Yeah. Part of Chelmsford. And it allowed those goods to go all the way to Boston, down through oh seven or eight different towns. Wow! And uh, in the middle you sex, carry yeah. very heavy loads, yeah. very inexpensively. Nice, nice. So, so what happened? Uh, people could go; uh, they could go down uh, about six-hour ride and come back the next day. Uh, so, go one way one day and the other way the next day. And it was towed by a horse, and a young boy would uh, would manage the horse to go in a, in a path alongside the canal. Nice. It was about 40 feet wide, and it was shaped like a, a trapezoid. Yeah. And uh, but one side had a pathway on it. Yes. So yeah. so this is an amazing innovation in transportation. I wanted you to know about it because yeah. it's really exciting. Yes. And, yeah. And it's actually one of the first in the country. Not maybe not the first, but wow. Right through Some Chelmsford. people have said it's the first, okay? I won't wow. make that claim because yeah. I don't know what's going on in the rest of the country because yeah. we have no way of communicating other than yeah. newspapers. Yes. And, you know, I don't yeah. read all the newspapers in the world. So, yeah. uh, so I wanted you to know about that. Now, it says 1852, okay? Yes. Yeah. So, so time has passed, and, and now we're in the uh, late middle 1800s. Well, what happened was a new uh, invention was taking... Uh, the country by storm in England. So entrepreneurs here in the United States thought, gee, the canal freezes in the winter. You know, we're kind of tired of uh, being stuck. We can't get our goods to Boston in the wintertime. Yeah. What if we had one of those newfangled railroads like they have over in England? Yes. So yeah. everybody wanted it because it's a next step up in technology. The canal was fine, yeah. and it's still going to serve until 1852, but in the 1830s, we're going to build a railroad. The yeah. canal is going to take the ties, which they were actually granite in the first version, yeah. and take them down the, uh, the canal and drop them off. And then the workers are going to build a railroad. And in many cases, it goes right next to the, uh, the canal. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. So what they didn't realize is that it was going to put the canal out of business. So in 1852, okay, yeah. the canal was a cup foot. Because uh, we had the railroad. And, in it. and then the land got gradually uh, sold off. It, it officially, they, they unincorporate, okay, it's an it's official process. So now the land is up for grabs, so people can go in and they can uh, they can purchase the land nice. and they can build on it and fill it in and do what they want. Wow. Uh, and maybe someday in the future, uh, far, far away, people will get interested in their history and, uh, and they'll go and research and maybe save some of the old sections before it all gets uh, it's filled in and, and farmed. Yes. You know, people are going to want to yeah. all uh, uh, fill in the, the, the trapezoidal uh, canal and, yeah. and grow things. You know, we're, we're all farmers here in Chelmsford. So, nice. so that's what's going to happen. And maybe someday, maybe they'll uncover some of the pieces of the canal and uh, yeah. it'll be a popular attraction. So, Well, thank you very much for giving us a tour. And you certainly know the history of Chelmsford. I guess you, you probably worked in the store quite a while or something, or worked in the town, or maybe even wrote some history books for Chelmsford. I would think so, but there's a great historian named maybe, Fred maybe, Merriam who did maybe, that. Uh, maybe in, in another life, in the future. Yeah, yeah in the future. Yeah, Fred I, Merriam, I think he, he's going to write many, many books of the history of Chelmsford, and we're so lucky to have him. And we're lucky to have you here today. Thank you very much for giving us the tour of this general store at the Chelmsford Historical Society, Barrett Byam Homestead. Thank well, you. 
Glad to have you uh, visit the store with this strange looking device. Yeah, that I'm using, yes. With lights and, uh, and, and funny looking things on it. Yeah. What does it say? Oh, there's a word on it. It says uh, HD, high definition. I have no idea what that means, yeah. but thank you very much for coming by the store. Thank you very much for the tour. We appreciate it.